Okay, in order to preserve the life of the scope, it is, in, it is imperative that um, cleaning procedure is taken as soon as possible uh, after the procedure. We recommend that you use enzymatic, which gets rid of the pathology inside of the, uh, the scope. Um, it's quite aggressive, so please always make sure that you use gloves when you're, you're handling this chemistry. Follow the manufacturer's guidelines in terms of dilution and in terms of the length of time that it has to be uh, soaked into the into the chemistry. The, the video scope, uh, it's very important that we make sure that the two waterproof caps are in place prior to any cleaning of the scope. So it is very important that these are actually in situ. What we're going to do next is to attach the leak tester. and inflate once again to approximately 180 milligrams of mercury and make sure that we are airtight prior to immersing the scope into the enzymatic cleaner. The whole of this scope can go in, it is fully submersible. If you're not sure as to whether your scope is immersible or not, please ring our technical department, give them the make and the model of the scope and they will give you the best possible advice on whether your scope is actually submersible or whether you need to use waterproof caps etc. So everything goes into the chemistry apart from the leak tester and we keep an eye on this throughout the procedure. If it does start to drop and drop in a hurry please remove the scope from the chemistry as soon as you possibly can. First thing we're going to do is to flush through the scope with the enzymatic cleaner and to do that we're going to remove the blue and the red buttons we'll just place those in the enzymatic with the long stem fitting in the blue port and the short stem in the, the red simply press down and push forward and taking a large 60 ml syringe suck up the enzymatic and flush it through a good two or three times until there are no air bubbles coming out and you're just getting a steady stream of chemistry coming through the scope. That's fine. So the next thing we need to do is to actually brush through the channels in the scope. There are actually three channels that we're going to brush and these are located in the control body in the red port. There are two holes in the red port and we're going to brush through the biopsy port here. So what we need to do is to insert the brush and using short sharp movements as you would introduce biopsy forceps and we're going to feed this all the way through the scope. The first hole that is straight ahead will actually come out of where your suction pump fits. If you feel too much resistance, don't force the brush. And as you can see, the brush has actually come through that port. If there's any pathology on there, you just simply wipe the pathology off and then you remove the brush. And the next port that we're going to go through is in the same port but at 45 degrees which is that angle there you can see the, the different angle on the brush so again nice short movements and this will actually come out of the distal tip end Let's make sure there's no pathology on there okay. so you get to resistance um, Please don't force the brush through, stop, bring the brush back out, try again. If you, again you feel too much resistance, give our service department a ring and they will certainly be able to, uh, to give you some advice. So the final port is going to be through the biopsy port here. And again, short movements. Keeping an eye on the leak tester through the procedure, make sure that it doesn't drop too far. And there again. 
we have the brush coming through the distal tip. Okay. So we need then now to reattach our flushing adapters. If you've used any biopsy forceps or cleaning brushes, you can certainly submerge it in the um, in the enzymatic. Suck up the enzymatic. So remember, flush brush, flush. Flush them through a couple of times. And when you're happy that there's nothing, no pathology coming back through. Uh, in order to So now we're going to uh, flush the scope through with disinfectant uh, in order to eradicate the enzymatic and any pathology that may have left be in there. Um, again, follow the manufacturer's recommendation in terms of dilution and your soaking time that you're going to need. Okay, so once again, keeping an eye on the leak tester, the scope becomes fully immersed. Uh, we're not going to brush through this time because we've already done that. What we're going to do is just simply take our syringe and flush through three or four times until we flood the scope full of disinfectant. Once we've done that and we're happy, then we leave the scope in the disinfectant for the rest of the allotted time given to you by the manufacturer's recommendations. Again, at this point, you can put any of your forceps or brushes through into the, to the disinfectant. Once we've finished with the disinfectant, we'll remove the scope. Anything else that's in there, you know, don't forget your, your buttons for your biopsy channel, etc. And what we do then is we get a sink of cold water it doesn't have to be deionized, it doesn't have to be um, distilled water. Preferably something like Milton baby fluid in there just to, to fully disinfect the scope. Um, makes everything a lot nicer. And what we do then, same as before, we just flush through three or four times. Once we've done that and then we're ready to, to go through the drying procedure. What we do is we release the pressure from the leak tester. And taking a lint-free cloth or a towel or something like that we quite simply dry the patient tube and the rest of the scope and again being careful not to put any unnecessary kinks into any of the tubing. As a tip to help dry the channel in the scope what we can do we can remove this cap here and plug it back into your processor, turn your pump on without connecting the water bottle. When you turn the pump on and if you cover the port where the water bottle would fit and press and hold the blue button that will force any water or any fluid out of the scope. Once the fluid has stopped coming through you just simply then cover the blue button which forces air through the scope, which dries the channel. You would then proceed to hang the, the scope up either on a hanger or return it back to its case.